Welcome to this demo of the RV Wolf. I'm your host, Christian Treutler, and I will guide you through this presentation. As the Technical Product Manager with Commit Capabilities, TM, here at Avi, I'm responsible for all things application security. Okay, let's have a look at the demo. To set the stage, I get the RV Vantage ADC with WAF in its beta version and the DVWA hacking application that it will allow me to show you a couple of simple attacks that will then be blocked by the application firewall. First of all, I log into the RV and what we are presented with is the dashboard of our virtual services that are actually uh, configured here. I have three virtual services and two are configured with WAF enabled by showing a little halo and a little shield next to it. When we go into a virtual service and hit the edit button, we get a new option here to attach a WAF policy to the virtual service object itself. We can open that virtual service policy up and can look at the settings of it and the core rule set rules that are attached to it. For WAF, we build two separate configuration structures. One is the WAF policy, where you configure all your standard configuration variables that you need to define all your applications, like allowed methods, allowed HTTP versions, content types, and so on. And we also have the WAF policy, where you tailor your rules to your specific application. Let's have a look at how the WAF reacts to an actual attack. Let's go to our DBWA app and fire an attack against the virtual service. To do this, I will show you a simple cross-site scripting that will allow me to trigger the WAF policy. Just simple alert box will be enough to show how the application firewall reacts. When I hit submit here, it actually will execute this cross-site scripting because the web application firewall policy is still in detection mode. To analyze this attack, let's go into the WAF log files. The log, WAF log line that I just generated um, tells me that the WAF matched and that I sent a post request and the response was a 200 OK. That is still because we are in detection mode and the WAF is only, only evaluating uh, how it would react to the traffic and not actually blocking. First of all, we see there's a new significance tab here that tells us the WAF actually matched this tra transaction. Scrolling down further, we get additional information of how much latency was added by the WAF. We have four different WAF phases with where specific rules can match the request, and that tells us how much time the WAF took here in milliseconds. And then we get the WAF hits. WAF hits, in our case here, as I've done a cross-site scripting, actually give me hits on the cross-site scripting rules. First one is the lib injection rule that fired on my attack um, by flagging the MTX message as an argument. Then another cross-site scripting rule matches, and the third one matches as well. The policy is also anomaly detection enabled, so it will actually fire on an anomaly score here of 15 by ha having hit three rules before as well. Next step, let's look how the WAF would actually block that attack. To do this, we need to change the mode of the policy. By editing the policy, we can switch to enforcement mode, hit save, and now the WAF will block the request. Let's go back into the DBWA and do another cross-site scripting. Another alert box will be totally enough to show what I wanted to show you. And we can fire this. Now the reaction from the WAF is a completely different one. We see a 4-3 forbidden because the WAF blocked the request. Back in the RV WAF, let's look at the log file. The WAF denied the request with a 4.3 response code, which we can see here. And now it has changed a little because it will only show us the one first rule that actually matched it and denied it. Let's assume for a moment this is a false positive and we want to get rid of it very quickly. 
To do this, we have built in an exception wizard. If you hit the Add Exceptions button here, it will actually open up a new tab showing you the exceptions. We have pre-populated a lot of fields for you here to make it as easy as possible. Again, let's assume this is a false positive and allow this from any IP on the path and this MTX message argument. Let's have a quick look at the policy. If we edit the policy again and actually show you the rules here, it now shows that we have created an exclusion for any IP with that path and with the match element. After creating the exclusion, let's go back to our DVWA and see how the response from the path changes. We can just do a reload here, send this attack again, and what will now happen is that both cross-site scriptings fire. The reason for that is that the request with the second attack is now excluded from the policy checking. You would do this with every false positive that you find with your app. Using the Abbey fabric, we actually can provide a lot of detailed information about the request, about all the attacks going on in the application firewall. We use our analytics engine to pre-process that and show you in the log file view and in our met, uh, WAF metrics view. Let's have a look at what it can actually help you achieve. Uh, for example, here on the right, you have the uh, grouping by specific WAF groups, for example. Here you can see that the attack tool that I've been running usually tries, or most of the time tries, to do injections. And if I click on here, I very quickly can um, find out which of the attacks were injections and see all the log files that corresponds with this. And I can further trim down to, okay, I only want that client IP, for example, being shown. Using these analytics, I can drill down to exactly where the false positive might be happening and very quickly remediate it with our exclusion system. Let's have a look at the WAF metrics page. It gives you really good insights on what's happening in your application, which requests are getting denied, and the reason for that. Very quickly, you will see which rule gets hit by having rule counts, rule hit counts here, application text getting hit, which paths are getting hit, and even popular accumulations, why an, uh, where an attack on your application happened. For example, here, the login page P was hit by this IP address, and somebody tried to attack the ARCS user token a lot. Using that information, you can quickly create additional custom rules if needed to secure a specific argument, a specific cookie, a specific header very quickly. This page also lets you very quickly disable any rules that might cause your site to not function well. If you see you have a false positive happening and it generates lots and lots of log files, from a single rule, you can directly disable a rule out of this screen, just using the disable button here. This analytics page is just the start of getting all the insights that you uh, used from your AV product into the web world. In summary, let's recap what we've looked at today. AVWAF provides very simplified rules for you to put in front of a virtual service to protect your application. It has a very simple workflow to create exclusions for your false positives that might occur. It also provides very detailed analytics and insights on what's happening with your policy and in your application. And lastly, the elastic scale part that lets you scale across bare metal, virtualized, or even containerized environments. Thank you and visit avinetworks.com for more information on the Avi Networks RAF.